Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on simplifying algebraic expressions. Our objective is two-part. First, to identify parts of an algebraic expression, and secondly, to use the distributive property that we learned in Lesson 7.1 to simplify algebraic expressions. Now, let's break this down into the different parts of algebraic expressions first. The first part is a term, and when you hear the word term, this is the uh, different parts of an algebraic expression. And we'll get into an example here in a moment. A coefficient is the numerical part of a term that contains a variable. For example, if we have 4x squared, the coefficient is the 4. Now, a constant is a term without a variable, such as 5. In other words, if I had the expression 2x plus 5, that 5 is the constant. It's the term without the variable. And of course, the coefficient there would be, well, 2. Now, like terms like terms are terms that contain the same variable with the same power. Or constants are also like terms. Now, what do I mean by that? If we have 2x plus 4x plus 3y plus 5y plus 2 plus 3, a couple different groups here. 2x and 4x would be like terms together. Separately, then, you'd have 3y and 5y, so 3y and 5y would be like terms. And then separate from that, we would have plus 2 and plus 3, so we would have 2 and 3. We'd have three different sets of like terms. Now, in this chapter, we're only going to be working with uh, terms with the exponent of 1, so we don't have to worry about the exponents with the same power quite yet. But I just want to kind of get this in our heads now, though, that something like 2x to the third and 4x to the third, those are like terms as you have the same exponent. But something like 2x squared and 4x to the third, those are not like terms because your exponents 2 and 3 are different. Now, I said I get back to terms, parts of an algebraic expression. Basically, this 2x, this 4x, this 3y, the 5y, 2, and 3, those are all terms, all parts of the algebraic expression. And now that we have a basic understanding of the parts, let's see if we can identify these in our first example. Identify the like terms in each expression. We have 4x plus y plus 7x. Now you notice in the previous example how I started boxing, circling, and triangling things, and that's a good way of going about this. So if I look for my 4x, okay, it's my first term. I'm going to put a box around that. Do you have any other terms in this expression that have an x? Yes, this 7x. I'm going to include that plus sign there. 
So, so far, I have 4x and 7x are my like terms. Now, the y has nothing, sadly, so we're not going to even list that. There's no like terms to group that with. As we move on to b, we have 3x as our first term, so I'll put a box around 3x. Any other terms in this with an x? Yes, the 2x. So, so far I have 3x and 2x. And I use the word and to group these together. And then this 8, this plus 8, the constant there. Well, I can group that with the plus 1. So I'll put comma, 8, and I'll group that with the word and, 1. Those are like terms since they're constants that have no variable. Now, why do we need to know how to group these? Well, this 3x and the 2x, if we were to look to simplify these, we could add together or subtract, as well as the 8 and the 1. But since 3x and 2x and 8 and 1 are not alike, we couldn't combine the 3x with the 2x and the 8 and the 1 together. Okay, and we'll get to that in a moment. Now let's identify all the different parts. The terms, the like terms, the coefficients, and the constants in each expression. Let's start with the terms. Just listing out all the different terms, we have 4x, comma, negative x, comma, 2y, comma, negative 3. I'm including this negative sign with the x, the subtraction with the x, the subtraction with the 3 as I list out my terms. Now, like terms is next. Here I would have the 4x and negative x, and that's about it. The y can't group with anything, the minus 3 can't group with anything. My coefficients, the terms to the left of the variable, we have 4. And I actually missed one. This negative x, well, that's a negative 1x. So I can write that coefficient as negative 1. You do need to remember that. And our constant here? Our constant is the term without the variable. That's our negative 3. Now, to simplify each expression, let's first start off by grouping like terms. An expression is in simplest form if it has, so simplest means no like terms and no parentheses. Now, do I have any like terms in step A? Yes, I have an 8n here, and I have a plus 4n here. So I can actually group those together in 8n plus 4n, and then separately I have this plus 4. Now, I can add my like terms. My 8n plus 4n becomes 12n. And different, unlike from that, is the plus 4, and that's just going to stay plus 4. So my answer is simply 12n plus 4. Do not combine that to be 16n. Is that a, that's not a 4n. If it were 4n, then yes, you could say 12n plus 4n is 16n. But it's just 12n plus 4. Those two are unlike terms. I have no like terms now. I have no parentheses, so this is in simplest form. What about b? You know, in b I have my a box around my 6x. I have a negative 5x here. I have a plus 4 and a negative 7. So if I rewrite this now, I have 6x minus 5x 
then plus 4 minus 7. 6x minus 5x, well 6 minus 5 is just 1x, and then 4 minus 7 is a plus negative 3 or just a minus 3, and quite frankly 1x is just the same thing as x minus 3, and that's it. I have no like terms, and I have no parentheses. Now in C, I get to use the distributive property here. Now be careful of what you actually distribute. I have, I'm have i going to rewrite this. I have y, and then I have minus 2 times x. This minus 3y I'm going to rewrite as a plus negative 3y to make this easier to distribute. So let's distribute, not the y, but just the negative 2 is going to be distributed here. So I'm going to have y minus, or even plus, the negative 2 times x, plus the negative 2 times negative 3y. Now, I can combine my negative 2 times x to be negative 2x, so y minus 2x, and then negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6, so plus 6y. Now notice up here I was not allowed to add a 12n plus 4 because they're unlike, but I can multiply terms that are unlike. I can take my coefficients here, the negative 2, which is the constant, times the negative 3, the coefficient, to get a positive 6y. Now, I got rid of the parentheses by distributing, but I'm not simplified yet because I still have terms that are alike here. I still have my y and my plus 6y. So I can add those. y plus 6y is 7y. And then I'm just left with my minus 2x. And just to make sure we're following the right practices using algebra here. Typically our final answers are always in alphabetical order. Well, x becomes before y in our alphabet, so the best way to write this answer is negative 2x plus 7y. And probably our toughest example here so far, but you have to distribute, keep track of your negatives, and simplify. Now, suppose you and a friend worked in the school store last week. You worked four hours more than your friend. Write an expression in simplest form that represents the total number of hours you both worked. Let's set a variable. Let's say that your friend worked for H hours. Well, you worked four more, so that would be H plus four. Now, to write an expression in simplest form, well, y your friend worked h. If you add that to your total hours of h plus 4, now we need to combine our like terms. We have our h and our h there, and that combines to be 2h, because h plus h is 2h. It's the same thing as 1h plus 1h. So you have 2h plus 4, and that is our simplified expression. That's it for this lesson. Good luck.